And I think an interesting topic to talk about would be how Palestinian and Jews view Hamas as a democratically elected uh, government. Jews feel a type of way about Hamas and the Palestinian uh, civilians who voted for Hamas. And I'm sure um, on the Palestinian end, it makes you feel other types of ways. So if anyone would like to answer that question. Well, <clears throat> I can say that like the, what comes out of a place sort of uh, is reflective of the unique challenges that society, that society has sort of uh, had to face. Um, and which is reflected as to what people, what what um, uh, we have now with the uh, people electing Hamas um, in that way. So I think it's that that is very representative representative of people in Gaza, since they were the only people that voted. Myself in the diaspora, uh, also Faraj and, and Tariq wouldn't have voted for them. I, I'll let them speak for themselves, but I'm certainly um, I'm not a uh, supporter of um, Hamas um, in regards to uh, their militant uh, struggle or guerrilla warfare tactics, and that should be uh, condemned. Um, uh, and I certainly don't feel uh, they reflect uh, many of our values, only that certain segment uh, that is living within Gaza and few people that sort of sympathize with them. What values do they symbolize that Palestinians no. resonate with? In your opinion or from someone you know personally? Sorry, could you repeat that again? I think I didn't catch. Oh, no, In the meantime, me, I'm kind of... Uh... Muhammad, Muhammad from our audience gives an interesting explanation. The formula is simple. They got elected by all other votes split due to many nominee while they had one each sector. Now, wh why they why they elected That's them? That's very they true in the West Bank. That's very true in the West Bank. The Palestinian Authority is very divided during the election. Well, Hamas would run one candidate, I'm pretty sure, per locality. And so it's a, it's a complex situation. They, Hamas did win the election, but it's not as clear cut as people think. Oh, sorry for jumping in, by the way. Sorry, I, I know. That. So no, I can, I can let him answer. But, but, uh, I've, just, I've heard it's also. I've heard it's also in relation to. I've heard from people that it's that Fatah was. It's not. I mean, the element of anti-Israel in in Jews and all does play into it, but a major component was the corruption in the PLO that pushed a lot of people towards the Hamas. Hamas is Hamas is known for its charity. So put it this way. Um, Hamas now is not Hamas before the election. Hamas was known, people from Hamas were never associated with corruption at all. While I'm not gonna say that the Palestinian Authority was, but everyone knows the reputation of the Palestinian Authority. Everyone knows this. And so if Hamas is known as a religious organization, religious people, I know, maybe Jews don't feel this. I don't know how it is in the Jewish community and the Palestinian community. Religious people are people you can leave money with. Religious people are people that you can go to for advice. And that's what Hamas was. While the Palestinian Authority came from outside, you know, many of them were refugees from outside the country who had returned. Many of the people of Hamas were refugees inside Gaza, inside the West Bank. They could, they understood the occupation. They understood many of the issues which Palestinians on the ground faced. While unfortunately, Fatah, a lot of them were from outside as well. So Hamas was a much more organic, became an organic movement in a lot of ways. And to be honest with you, I think a lot of people who voted with them, um, let me know if I'm speaking too fast, by the way, a lot of the people that voted for Hamas, to be honest, it was just a protest vote or a one-time thing. As in, there's a two-party system. One party was in charge from like 96, I think, or not, off the top of my head, 94. Hamas was the complete opposite of them. So, yeah. Uh, I, I just wanted to say that, like, like going back to Hamas, it's, that, it's important to realize that, like, Hamas didn't happen in a vacuum. It kind of happened. It kind of, like, rose into prominence and, like, sort of, like, political like Islamism became a like contentious movement when like a lot of Arab countries basically got disillusioned with with uh, Arab nationalism. And so like to answer Danny's question of like, what does Hamas, what kind of principles does Hamas represent to the everyday Palestinian? To be fair, it's revolutionary struggle, very similar to anti-colonial um, 
movements in the past, whether it's in Cuba or in like S South America and uh, so forth. So that's what they, th th that's how they represent. And that's why like you'll find many even Christians that do support Hamas. I don't want to support Jabhat Shabiya, which is um, the PFLP because they're atheists and they think that like, oh, Hamas, they're like, at least they believe in God, you know? So like they can, um, they can, put, they can trust their eggs in their basket. It obviously doesn't like, you know, obviously what Hamas um, uh, painted itself as isn't exactly what it is now. And, you know, so it's just like, kind of, it's kind of stuck with it. But yeah, so like, I don't know, I hope that answers the question, the general question. I mean, I, I, I also reminds um, me, well, if you, I was going to add something, but if you want to move on, that's fine. No, go ahead, Tom. No, I was just going to say, I think, um, I mean, this is drawn what Muhammad said, that you know, Hamas did not develop out of a vacuum. And to my understanding, it was originally an affiliate of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood in uh, the Gaza Strip. And mm -hmm. for a while, um, it was founded in the 70s, 60s or 70s, I believe. And then believe it, believe it or not, at the time, it was actually peaceful. The Israeli government kind of, like, not quite supported them, but, like, I guess covertly. Well, I guess you could say so, like, they, did, they did support them in, like, a covert sense. because They encouraged they, Hamas they, mocks, yeah. Yeah, they saw, because they saw them as a way to draw them away from, um, from the more sort of secular militant Fedayeen. And it was really only, like, around the first thing for when they were like, oh, oh, crap, we, you know, <laughs> this isn't good. Like, what have we done now? And I'm not saying Israel created Hamas, but I think that's something that does – often go overlooked that in its early years, you know, the, the Israeli government did kind of look the other way. And now it's like, oh, we have this huge problem with Hamas. And it's like, well, that, I mean, that's kind of an important part. It's funny that you say that, Tom, because one of the reasons that um, the strategy of Israel is to sustain but weaken the enemy and not demolish the enemy right. is because of exactly what you're talking about. Right. It completely changed uh, Israel's strategy. Like, and the way she looks at the world and uh, terrorist groups. So, I mean, I know that, I'm sorry, that was really wrong for me to say. It's just a lot of times Israelis look at Hamas as a terrorist group instead of a democratic elected uh, party. 